So we divided the verb up into several um, lectures and topics because uh, it's something that is, although very integrated, is easier to understand in its components. And so you've had the liver in likely anatomy and physiology. Certainly we've talked about it earlier in ClinPath, and I'm sure you had it in kind of the systemic pathology course. And we're really going to, of course, focus on interpretation of blood work. But it's really important to understand liver function because when we talk about liver failure, of course, that's going to be the opposite of liver function. So um, you've talked about several of these before, and so they will sound familiar. So certainly protein production uh, and albumin being probably the biggest protein that we think about. Um, there are, of course, other types of proteins made within the liver and certainly carrier proteins, um, some types of globulin, but it's really albumin that we're going to look at the most. And of course, when we have liver failure, you can have decreases in hypoalbuminemia. A second function is clotting factors. And of course, I know you know this because when we talked about prolongations in both PT and PTT, we talked about liver failure. So you would look at clotting factors to, or you'd look at PT and PTT to tell you. Glucose, we talked a little bit about glucose in terms of an indirect measure of liver function. So certainly hypoglycemia would suggest, along with the others, decreases in liver function. Cholesterol, so cholesterol is made by the liver, um, but not only is it made by the liver, you make bile acids from cholesterol, uh, and so when that happens, that's a way to excrete cholesterol. So cholesterol can increase when you've got blockages and it can decrease when you're failing. Uh, another is um, just kind of related to, uh, related to cholesterol, but it's essentially all fatty acid metabolism. And so one of the things that we always think of with cats with hepatic lipidosis is they have abnormal lipid metabolism. So you can see um, accumulation of fat. Remember that the liver both detoxifies and stores things. And so it can store things like copper, uh, iron, um, triglycerides even, and glycogen, kind of are some of the big ones. Of course, glycogen being a storage form of glucose, triglycerides, fat storage, and then copper and iron. So what's important to realize is that, of course, if you abnormally store copper, or if you have animals, I always think of Bedlington Terriers, uh, sheep, um, even Labrador Retrievers, some Dobermans have an abnormality where they have a copper hepatopathy, to think about the fact that the liver normally stores copper and then it's in excess. You can store excess iron. Again, the fat, I always think of lipidosis and that kind of relates just to fatty acid metabolism. And then glycogen is normally stored, but you can store excessive amounts as well. Um, detoxification, of course, is extremely important. And when we, talk, when we actually talk about liver injury, some drugs that the liver normally detoxifies is going to actually injure it. But the other thing that's important to realize is that since the liver is kind of a filter for the body, that detoxification can certainly cause injury to the liver. Um, other things um, in terms of detoxification that we don't really think about being toxic is, of course, you get a conversion of ammonia to urea via the urea cycle. And so that's essentially detoxifying it. Um, another is um, water insoluble to water soluble. And so a classic example is, of course, the conjugation of bilirubin so that you can actually excrete conjugated bilirubin. So that's the big one we think of. And the eighth one's kind of similar to number four, um, and this is cholesterol um, being made into bile and going into bile acids. So those are kind of main liver functions. So although I'm going to talk about this at the end a little bit, um, kind of at the, one of our last lectures, so when we talk about liver function tests, we talk about indirect liver function tests. So these indirect liver function tests, and then we have direct liver function tests. 
And so indirect are things, again, like albumin, clotting factors. So indirect would be a low albumin, uh, a low glucose, low cholesterol, an increase in PT, and an increase in PTT, and of course a decrease in urea. So direct liver function tests, you can imagine if the liver is supposed to actually convert urea from ammonia, so an increase in ammonia, so ammonia is a direct liver function test, and the other is bile acids. And we'll talk more about these uh, a little later on.